I'm ready. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, that was that was his fault. In here. Just watch me. He, it was Knocking like, everything yeah. over. I'm just trying to get in here. <laughs> here, I will move. In no, you're good. Way. So today you got your first taste of what it was like to be a Big Ten volleyball player. What have your impressions been, and was it what you expected? <laughs> you know. I think it's really cool what the Big Ten's doing for volleyball, obviously, on a day like this. It's really cool to be a part of. I've obviously played in a few Big Ten matches, but haven't been through a Big Ten season and played on a Big Ten team yet, so I'm kind of learning day by day what that consists of. But I think today was very mind-blowing just because it's so cool for them to put on an event like this, of this level, for volleyball. So it's very cool to be a part of, very cool to experience, and something I'll definitely remember. Do you take pride in the fact, I mean, of all the teams here, I think you're the only newcomer that wasn't at their school last year, too. Yeah. I mean, do you take pride in the fact that, I mean, you're a team captain, that you're here representing Nebraska, and you're brand new to the program? Yes, I do, a ton. I think at the end of the day, what I want my volleyball career to be wrapped up in is who I am as a person and how I treated my teammates and the legacy that I leave behind. Not necessarily how many kills I can record and what awards I can win, obviously, those are good goals to strive for, but at the end of the day, I want to be remembered for the kind of person that I am. So I take a ton of pride in that. Um, and being voted captain by my teammates kind of was a testament to that. And so for me, it's really, really special because I do take so much pride in that. And um, I'm grateful for my teammates. I'm grateful for, you know, my parents for raising me the way that they raised me and things of that sort. There's a lot of people and a lot of things to be grateful for. So. I do take pride in it, but I also want to make sure that at the end of the day, I'm giving my gratefulness back to those who have helped me be here. I think we talked to you last, it was just a couple of days after your name captain, it's been about a month now. Mm -hmm. How has that sunk in and have you kind of developed how you're going to use that as you enter the season? Yeah, definitely for sure. Me and Lexi have been working on it since that day, you know, kind of how we were going to lead this team, what was going to be really important to us, how we were going to make sure that all the pieces of the puzzle fit together because at the end of the day that's what a team sport is and that's how you win is figuring out okay we have 14 pieces to the puzzle how are they going to fit together and how are we going to make sure that the puzzle's full you know and so you know we talk about it daily <laughs> we were literally talking about it yesterday things of that sort and so I think we've kind of had a solid month under our belt in the summer is obviously really good for the team just because coaches aren't around very much so a lot of the responsibility was on me and Lexi so we were able to kind of develop that and develop the culture and the standards that we want this team to be at and kind of start implementing that. So it's been really good for both of us. Coach Hunter called you the mom of the group. <laughs> Do you agree with that? And kind of what is your leadership style like? <laughs> yes, I would. I, I'm always the one that's prepared. Like like Steve was talking about today, like we were in the car and I was like, okay, I'm going to bring Tide on, I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to bring my Tide to go stick just in case anything happens, you know, things of that sort. Like if you need anything, I'm going to probably be the one that has it. So that's kind of why I'm called the mom. I'm a very caring person as well. So if anyone on the team needs anything, they know that they can come to me and I will be there. It doesn't matter when it is or who it is or things of that nature, I'll be there. So. I would say I'm the mom of the group, and I think my teammates would agree with that as well. <laughs> Do you bring the fruit snacks and like the orange slices? Duh! I bring everything. Bring everything. Yep. <laughs> Got it all. Coach has talked about how even the setting has been between the two. Can you maybe describe uh, Kennedy's and Bergen's styles, like individual, their strengths, and what's like playing with them? <laughs> yeah, they're both great setters, and at the end of the day, um, it could be either of them, mm -hmm. and no one on the team would be surprised. They're both great people. They're both great players, and. Like you said, they do have different strengths. Um, and so I don't know who it's gonna be. I have no idea. It could be either one of them. I love both of them very, very much. And it's very cool to have such a tight race between them two because at the end of the day, they're pushing each other daily. You know, they both want it so bad. And so they're only making each other better throughout the process. Um, Bergen's obviously new. And so she brings a little more calming factor to the court, whereas Kenna has been here, so she brings the experience. She brings the upperclassmen kind of vibe to the court. So, like I said, it could be either one of them, and I think the team would be happy. So, love them both. They're both great people and players. There's also going to be a lot of competition on that left end. What have you seen from those girls, and what are you expecting out of them? Same sort of thing. You know, it could go any way, and I think that's the strength of the depth of our roster right now is – you could put anybody out there on the court and the team would win. So at the end of the day, like it could be the six freshmen or the five freshmen, the six newbies, you know, me, inclu me included. Or it could be the 
upperclassmen. Like it could literally be anyone and no one would be surprised and they would carry that weight. So, you know, that's the kind of same sort of situation out there on the left. They all have different strengths. They're all great people. They're all great players. So it could go a bunch of different ways for any position on the court. It's going to be someone though. That means it's going to not be someone. How do you as captain try to deal with that? that I mean, someone's not going to be playing. Someone's mm -hmm. going to be on the match. How do you kind of deal with that and get ahead of those dynamics and make sure that everyone's on board? Yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's every single person on this team wants to win. So you have to remain selfless in that as captains, as everyone, as a member of this team, you have to understand that whatever puts the team in the best position to win is what coach is going to go with. And it has nothing to do with you as a person um, in that moment. And it could change from game to game. We have no idea at this point. But at that point in time, if it's what the team is needing, then that's what needs to happen. And I think this team has a really good grasp of that and they understand that it doesn't matter who it is but if that's our best position to win then that's okay and we just have to respect that and understand that it doesn't make you less of a good person or doesn't devalue your worth in any way like it has nothing to do with you as a person so just what the team needed and I think our team has a really good grasp of that. In what areas do you feel like you've grown over the last seven months of being a Husker? Well volleyball wise I think I've grown a lot in passing and things of that sort. Um, serve receive, I would say, is definitely the skill that I've probably grown the most in. But as like a person and that kind of aspect of things, I think I've done a really good job of, everyone always talks about not being defined by your sport. And I think that's a really hard thing to grasp and to kind of understand until you're at the level that we're at. And so I think that's one thing that I've kind of developed the most and that I'm very, very proud of. Is that I've done a very good job of understanding that, like how I practice that day doesn't determine how good of a person I am or things of that sort. And so I think I've grown the most in that area of my game, kind of the mental, yes, I'm playing at a very, very high level, but not letting that affect my day-to-day -day life. All right, I got to steal a mirror.